I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, as sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I, I went down a rabbit hole this morning. Um, okay. And I, I posted in the Discord, and I think I also might have texted you, about Steven Seagal and his song, his reggae song, Me Want the Punani. You did You did send me Me Want the Punani, and I didn't listen to all of it. I listened to a little bit of it, and I was like, this sounds like Steven Seagal It, it is singing. Steven Seagal, it's, and if anyone hasn't, and I don't know why you would have, Steven Seagal has a reggae album on that album. There, well, it's like blues slash reggae dance. Uh, there's a song called Me Want the Punani. Steven Seagal tells you he wants the Punani, how he's going to make you come. He does a Jamaican accent. It's terrible. So then mm-hmm. I... I read the view, reviews on Amazon. They're more sad. I thought they'd be funny. They were just kind of sad. People were like, I bought this because I thought it would be funny and bad, but it, it's just a little bit less than good. So it, I, it just made the people who bought it sad. Um, it, it's, 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 not, it's not bad enough to actually be worth laughing yeah. about. It's, yeah. it's the kind of bad that's like, it's the kind of bad that's just disappointing. Exactly. But I noticed he's holding a guitar, and yeah, he's not known. I didn't know him for playing guitar. So then <clears throat> it turns out Steven Seagal, one, has like 300 guitars. They're collectible, very expensive. I saw a video of him. They're just on the dirt. He's got like, 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 just very expensive guitar. And he's like, I've played since I'm a child. Anyway, no, he hasn't, because it turns out Steven Seagal doesn't know how to play the guitar. But that doesn't stop him from getting on a stage frequently. In front of a whole bunch of people. And, uh, what? Yeah, so also the comments are pretty good. You, you don't necessarily have to listen. You just have to look with your eyes. Um, I'm going to look with my, my... Oh, my God. Epic guitar solo. Because, I mean, you don't... I know, even if you don't know how to play the guitar, he's ho- not holding the guitar... Uh, none of the hands are doing the right thing. And I, I don't shit on people who try, but he doesn't. he doesn't actually know how to play the guitar. <clears throat> he holds the guitar. So what you're telling me is, are you telling me that this is not the guitar playing the music, though? The guitar is playing the music, but it's... So he's pl- on a stage playing in front of people, but at the same level as, like, um, like a beginner. Like, your first three lessons as, like, a, like if you're a 12-year-old. So he's playing at, like, a child's first, like, guitar. baby steps. That, like, he's he's he's... He's none of the hands are 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 he's the right hand he's he strums the guitar like he's playing Guitar Hero, and then mm-hmm. he only knows one shape and that's the pentatonic scale, which isn't really a scale it's just like the same whatever. Yeah, he keeps playing it literally the same like it's literally the same guitar. Yeah, yeah. They've added they've added sound effects to this video. It, it he has like Stevie Ray Vaughan's original guitar like. Uh. He has crazy oh. expensive collectible guitars. The uh, the the comments are hilarious, but then that started making me ask more questions, right? Because he has his own album, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he plays music. Nobody wants, nobody would ask for this. So why? And then uh, he also puts out a lot of movies. So <laughs> then I started to Google like Steven Seagal and money laundering. And while Steven Seagal hasn't been directly charged with money laundering people immediately around him have been charged for money laundering oh my god but, but then i was like well there's got to be something like that, that's not a huge anyway <clears throat> 2020 steven seagal uh was charged by the sec uh <laughs> the security exchange commission yeah the, the security exchange commission okay okay um uh, charges uh, against him and three other in- individuals. They paid him a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand in cash, and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin two gen. Which, by the way, not Bitcoin. So he what he so these guys started, what 
there's a cryptocurrency that was called Bitcoin 2Gen. So the guys okay. that made Bitcoin 2Gen paid Steven Seagal $250,000 cash and $750,000 in their cryptocurrency. So, like, I, that's basically an okay. IOU because it's they were just invented okay. it. And they're like, here you go. This is worth t- – trust us. It, you're rich. Anyway. So okay. then – they did all of that under the table, and then he helps them defraud something like $11 million out of investors. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, what the fuck, Steven Seagal? Yeah, so here's, this is the actual SEC um, thing on What it. the it, actual fuck? And, and then this other one on CoinGeek goes into like the amount that they stole from investors and stuff like that. Oh, my so, God. So we know people around him have been charged in money laundering while he hasn't been well, directly hasn't charged he... with money laundering. Wait, he's he, how has he's, he not been He's been defrauding da- investors. <laughs> how does he how does he not get charged with money laundering? So my guess is but he hasn't been charged. He's doing lots of shit like this where he's not claiming that he's getting a million dollars and then he's doing these weird movies and CDs to wash the money to like reclaim this shit that he's not claiming. To make it look clean. So the, I, I suspect strongly that, that Steven Seagal's money laundering. <laughs> oh my god. So he's the mattress firm of uh, people who do karate badly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, and he had... Uh, he did an AMA. And it was... Oh no! It was... The, Why? It was Google Steven Seagal AMA. It went exactly as... Like, the first thing is what... The first question is, why did you think this was a good idea? Um... <laughs> Uh, I had it up earlier. Just reading it, it was, it was the worst. Um, Why so did you over think the I live? Yeah. So, um, so I wanna, I wanna talk about. So, really quick. Yeah. Uh, two of the comments that were there's like three comments that are really fucking great on the Steven Seagal video that I just want to point out. Yeah. First. Have you got the tab for this? I worked out the first note, but I can't get my <laughs> fingers around the other two. Um, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah. Uh, another one is, it would have ruined my day if he had actually been able to play. <laughs> Fair. And then, of course, one of the best. Um, oh, there's actually another one that I just found. I'll save that one for last. Uh, so I've been playing guitar, playing for just over a year. This video really helped me improve my confidence in my own abilities as a guitarist, <laughs> or at least as an inspiring guitarist. <laughs> and then, and then my personal favorite, just like Hendrix at Woodstock. <laughs> he, oh god, he has Jimi Hendrix's oh, actual. Um, it was his what? jazz master. Like Steven Seagal has all of these, and he's got like four BB guitars signed by BB King that he played on the stage. He has all these really expensive things that he doesn't know how to play. There's a video of him I mean, going that's... over all his guitars. They're just in the dirt. It makes me so sad. So, ah, uh, he puts his guitar in the dirt. That's sad. Yeah, that's bad for guitar. It's a bad for car guitar. It's very, very bad for guitar. And then reading his AMAs, um, there's another thing that we need to know about Steven Seagal. Um, someone said. What kind of pants were you wearing when Jean Bell LaBelle choked you unconscious and you shit your pants? So here's another fun Steven Seagal story. Um, apparently, okay. there's a guy named Jean LaBelle, and Steven Seagal was saying how he has this special Aikido technique that makes it it's impossible to choke him out. You cannot choke out Steven Seagal. And then Jean LaBelle mm-hmm. was like, I oh, don't know. So anyway, long story short, Jean LaBelle, after um, uh, Steven Seagal saying it's impossible to choke him out, Chokes out Steven Seagal, who then goes unconscious and shits his pants. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't know that the Steven Seagal lore ran so deep. Yeah, so it it, it, it went very deep. Um, his AMA only lasted about 15 minutes, and there were really only two questions. The first one... Uh, was deleted and resp- the reply was how long did you th- take it to realize this was a mistake the second question was what kind of pants were you wearing when Jean LaBelle choked you unconscious and caused you to shit your pants and then he just kind of stopped doing the AMA <laughs> good yeah uh, good. so that that was my morning so far 
good. Yeah. Oh god. I had I had something that I was gonna joke about and like you've completely I ruined derailed it. you derailed my entire thought process entirely. It's... Like I dead ass can't tell you what I was gonna joke about before you started talking about Steven Zagal. Because Steven Zagal has now completely eclipsed everything else in my day. <clears throat> yeah, as he should, as he should. That was my morning, getting set up. I was like, well, John's not on yet. I'll, um, I'll, I'll just keep following this thread. And, oh boy, was it a good thread. God. It was very good. That, that's just horrifying. Yeah. Uh, how does, how, how do, how do, how do Steven Seagal? How do Steven Seagal Seagal? How, how do Steven Seagal Seagal? <clears throat> how, how do how do how oh, comes, also how comes Steven Seagal? There's a fantastic podcast called "Do You Know Who Steven Seagal Is," and um, that's all. I just recommend it, and it's exactly what you think it is. And that is two comedians calling random stores and asking whoever picks up the phone if they know who Steven Seagal is. That's the whole thing. I mean, that kind of works. That kind of works. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Actually, is that is it? Do you know who Steven? I don't think that's Seagal. Is who's the other Steven? I don't think that's the name of the podcast. Who's the other? Who's the actor? Jason Seagal. It's uh, who? Do you know who Jason Seagal is? That's who. All right. It's not. Do you know? It's do you know who Jason Seagal is? Oh God. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, anyway, uh, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm just, like, Steven Seagal out right now. I'll be back. I had a cup of coffee not that long ago, and it feels like my head's filled with bees, because I usually only drink a glass of tea in the morning. Oh, you know, I've never really had any impact from caffeine. I I made a decision to um th this was a while ago. This isn't anything recent to like consciously reduce my caffeine intake because I, I was drinking like mm -hmm. two monsters while I while I at work and like come home have a cup of coffee and then like go out to a That's... bar or whatever and have some more more Red Bull or something. That might be suboptimal. So I was drinking a lot of energy drinks and I was like, oh maybe oh, I should uh... not. That that, that that might be suboptimal what you just described. Yeah. So now now I just have in the morning I I uh, fill up my my Mandalorian water bottle with tea and go to work. Baby Yoda. Ba not Baby Yoda. I'm calling him Baby Yoda. I know he has a real name. I haven't watched season two yet, but that's a whole nother. One, problem. his name is Grogu. Two, you, what? Yeah, I just I just haven't gotten around to it. That's what? all. Why? Because. I, I need to... This, okay, so here's the reason. I want to watch it with Christina. Oh, we need to fair. watch season one first. Fair, okay. And then that's that's a thing. So we've been watching Doctor Who instead. Ah, uh, where did he start? Uh, we started with the most recent Doctor. Jodie Whittaker? Miss Frizzle. Yeah, Miss Frizzle. Okay. As I call her. Okay. Yeah, Miss Frizzle's got some... Miss Frizzle's got uh, some good energy. Uh, Peter Capaldi's Doctor's a little weird to me. Because he doesn't have the same whimsy that Matt Smith or David Tennant did. David Tennant and Matt Smith are are the two best ones of the new the new uh, series. Peter Capaldi is pretty good. Um, Jodie Whittaker is good. I want to know who they're the they're, they're going to tease to be after her because this is her last season as the Doctor. Yeah. Um. So which is unfortunate because like she hasn't gotten as many episodes, but. This is not a Doctor Who fan cast. Well, she's had, this is about I think two seasons, which is more than I'm forgetting the first guy that came. Well, the back. first guy didn't. The first guy didn't want to be Doctor Who. Yeah. So like that was the whole like he didn't want to be Doctor Who. Yeah. So he left. That's right. He was like, "Can I be the cool leather jacket Doctor and not be quirky in any way?" And they were like, "Ah, uh, the Doctor's got to be quirky." Yeah, and then they yeah. got rid of him. Yeah. Anyway, so we're doing a part two of the Gory Ghost. Um, we, 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 left, we left off the... They were doing the manhunt around the cabin because rocks were being mm -hmm. thrown. 
Um, yep, yep, yep. This is part two of the Someone Threw Rocks episode. That's a lot of episodes, Brandon. It's, like, it could be a lot we, of... There honestly, were, I could probably go through our backlog and make a playlist that's just somebody threw rocks. Battle of Eight episode. Canyon. That There was a lot of yep. rock throwing in that one. There was um, a lot of rock throwing. But that was that was Sasquatch throwing at Brandon. Let's like... Let's 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 pay the devil his due. Okay. Um, oh, and again, the primary source for this is going to be uh, Mystery, Myth, and Dis- Misdirection, Haunting the Gory Ghost by Daniel Best, as well as the Gory Ghost original newspaper accounts of Australia's most prominent poltergeist case. <gasps> A book of compiled news articles by Patrick Gallagher. Whew. All right, got that done. You okay there? Yeah, those are uh, a lot of words. Anyway, so where we left off, Ridge... One of the officers is standing in front of a group of armed men and said that um, all weapons are to be unloaded and shouldered unless he says otherwise. A decision I fully support. Um, I mean, that's honestly the first time I've ever heard anyone saying that ever. Yeah. And if, like, if, if there's going to be an armed mob, that's the way to do it. Um, they made a circle around the house. They set up a perimeter of torches and shouldered their guns and sheathed their knives. Many, many knives. They they made a point of specifying that the knives were sheathed. I bet you you heard that sound effect. Like, you know, the one that they add to movies to make it sound like the knife is being pulled out. Like the, Oh, the shwing. Yeah. (laughs) The shwing or the shink. Yeah. Like, I bet you heard like an audible shink from everyone. sheathing. knives. It was probably so loud. Like it's a quiet sound, but when you have a lot of people do it, it gives you the willies. Um, it was 7.30 uh, that the first stone flew out of the darkness and hit a window, showering broken glass over Sergeant Ridge. Shortly after, rocks were being thrown at the group from random locations, and Ridge commanded the torches be lit and the g- guns uh, loaded, right? So th- I think they they're, had the torch perimeter, and they're like, let's, mm-hmm. let's try to be as sneaky as a armed mob can be, turn off the torches. Anyway, they lit the torches... They loaded their guns. I'm assuming by torches you mean lights, right? Like flashlights. I don't. I. When was I, when was the Geary ghost? Because like think I feel like it might be literal torches, maybe like, but like, like in a lantern, because he's saying light the torches be lit. But but that's that's you could say light the torch and it's a flashlight. It's also twenty one, so it would it would make sense for there to be flashlights. It could right? be flashlights because Australian Australia was a. Uh, they're the, the English things. Um, rocks kept coming out of the darkness. Supposedly, some of the men tried to throw them back at the stranger, but their throws couldn't make it to the edge of the torchlight, implying like the guy's thrown really, real hard, and we got a real uh, rocky. All right, so I have something to say about that. Okay. If they're in, if it's it, all right. So assuming it's fire torches. Okay. Weak sauce. First of all, yeah, incredibly weak sauce. If it's electric torches, also weak sauce because this is a 1921 flashlight. Yeah, yeah. You like know what? <laughs> that, that, it might be an actual. They might be electric lights or lamps that they got out there. I, but th- like, I think the fact but, that it was an armed mob in my, my brain thinks mob and torches. Well, because of yeah, but like I think I think that this is a good old fashioned 1920s armed mob. It's a it's a good old fashioned nineteen twenties armed mob. Um, they might all just be little people too, and by that I mean there's a picture from last episode of uh, William and uh, stand next to his daughter, and they were the same height because he's a little man. So they might all just be little men, like just little. And it's like the one normal sized guy can actually throw real far. Um, whatever the case, Rich then gave the order to open fire in the direction the rocks were coming from. Again, they're coming from everywhere, so now it's just a bunch of people firing into the wilderness. Um, it seems bad. But he also said fire high as to not hit anyone in that direction, which I guess slightly more responsible than um, blindly fire into the darkness, and I guess it was to scare off the stone thrower. However, I do have a few issues with this, um, and that's one I don't recommend blindly firing into the dark. Um, also, he would have had to shout this as they were surrounding a house, and he would also have to yell over gunfire, which I presume that whoever throwing the rocks is would also have heard him yelling, don't shoot at them. God damn it. Right? 
if you're just <laughs> shooting, yeah. aim high, then the Throck guy's like, oh, they're they're aiming high. Yeah, they're aiming high. I don't need to worry about getting hit. Yeah. yeah. Like, fuck this. I don't care. I'm going to keep throwing rocks. Although, if they're fl- throwing rocks from every di- direction, I'm going to assume there's more than one rock thrower. Yeah. I, uh, presumably, yeah, that there'd be more. <laughs> there'd be multiple people throwing rocks. Um, there was a volley of gunfire, and it was responded to by more stones coming at them, and they were all coming uh, from the same location this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Minnie, at this point, was uh, inside the house with the rest of the Hotter family, and they said knocks could be heard on the walls coming from the outside, I assume rocks. Uh, but those yeah. on the outside said they heard the knocks coming from the inside. And my initial thought is that um, this was the sound of big old rats. stones hitting the walls and the walls being situated between the two groups of people. That they're, That's where the sounds should be coming from, right? If there's a wall between two people, the person on the outside would hear it come from the inside and the inside would hear it come from the outside because that's how the middle works. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Middle doesn't exist. Middle doesn't exist. Middle can't hurt you. Middle can't hurt you. Uh, except all the times that middle explicitly hurts everyone. Middle hurts everyone. But middle does hurt everyone. But, like, it can't hurt you. But it, it will. Middle will kill you dead. <laughs> It'll kill you dead. Uh, whatever don't the case. Don't fuck with the middle. It was after the stone throwing persisted after the volley of gunfire that it was suggested that perhaps the perpetrator was not among the living. Um, an article uh, from the Braidwood Review on Tuesday, the 12th of April, 1921, uh, titled Strange Happenings, Mysterious Stone Throwing, Police and People Puzzled. Um, and I've heavily redacted this article um, because a lot of it we covered from the last episode. They were giving background that we already discussed. I- I'd say, I wouldn't say re- redacted so much as you reduced. I reduced. I cut out a lot. I, I did a lot of uh, editor editing um, it, just, as far as just removing information that we already knew. The whole town of okay. Goria near Armadale is uh, in a ferment. The cause is not the bunny yip this time, uh, which uh, did we do a bunny yip we, episode? I think we did a bunny yip. Let me see. Did we? If, if not, keep going, keep going. We can do a future one. Um, but an outbreak of mysterious stone throwing. The police, assisted by residents, are unable to solve the mystery. The center of the stone throwing is the residence of Mr. William Bowen, a ganger in the employ of the Goria Shire Council. Constables reinforced by Sergeant Ridge uh, and four civilians placed themselves, placed themselves in position around the house, making it practically impossible for anybody to approach without detection. After a time, the watchers heard stones thudding against the walls of the house. They closed in and search, but without result. A similar vigil on the following night was also fruitless. Last Monday, the party was augmented by ten civilians, uh, several being armed with guns. The men were placed around the house carefully, and so well that they were placed... Uh, the, 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 they were. It's just saying that they were satisfied that it's impossible for anyone to approach the house uh, without getting seen. However, they were wrong, because later that night... A window uh, almost in front of Sergeant Ridge and Mr. Hengi uh, was smashed. Three minutes later, another window was shattered and the watchers closed in, flashing torches uh, in a close search. You know what? The way they worded it this time, I think you might be right on the um, th- the flashlight the flashlight deal. I think it's I think it's a flashlight. I think uh, they are also, we did it on the we did it on the Yowie. We mentioned the bunny yip in it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, we did it on the Yowie. Okay, nice. Um, yeah. There's uh, the next half hour. Uh, th- they threw twenty stones hitting the building. The fifth night, the mystery saw forty volunteers uh, show up at the house. Uh, on this occasion, however, Ridge um, was uh, he procured a powerful searchlight. So they're not just torches. We're not just flashlights. Now they're, they're using like a searchy Batman floodlight. Um, the house and the surrounding country were swept by the beam constantly, despite all the uh, preparation, uh, stone throwing began shortly before seven o'clock. About 30 reps on the walls of the house were heard. Another search was without result. I don't know who is counting rocks. I think they're just estimating, by the way. I don't think they're actually yeah. counting how many rocks are hitting the house. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't count. Uh, that, okay. <laughs> just end of sentence. <laughs> I can't count. I can't, I can't, I'm I, bad at count. I'm bad at count. count. Count, count, I'm bad, bad count. Me bad count. Count no good pound. 
No good pound, count pound, pound. <laughs> the, the Bone no family, uh, with one exception, are greatly worried by the attack on their hitherto peaceful home. The exception is the daughter, who was chased in the first instance. Uh, she has been apparently undisturbed throughout and exhibits none of the signs of fear that are occasionally shown by other members of the family. A peculiar Maybe feature. she's just like, fuck you guys for not, like, calling the cops. I'm happy that they're you're freaking out now. She's like, Maybe it's, like, a weird schadenfrau that oh, she's ma- getting. Like, yeah, you didn't believe me, so this is what you get now. Yeah, this is what you get, bitches. This is what you get. Uh, a, a peculiar feature is that the missiles seem to be directed at the girl. Whichever room she is uh, taken into is assailed. Uh, she has been carefully watched, thus disposing of the theory that she was in some way responsible for the stone throwing or the wrappings on the walls. Nothing done. Why do they always? Why do they always watch the girl? Like they're always like, "I bet you it's the girl." I bet you. It's Which her. I guess, I guess, I guess it's just general sexism throughout history. Maybe the thing about poltergeist or a common theme of of poltergeist is it always involves um, a female well, about the age of puberty. For but, like but Brandon, all the stories, but Brandon, does it or is it just us? Is it just people being assholes? It's people and being like, assholes, but that's the theme they take on. Like you know, all those hormones. <laughs> like, because that's that's what it is. It's people yeah. being literal assholes. Like, oh yeah, Every, uh, everyone knows the when the first time uh, when it, when a when a girl becomes a woman for the first time. Um, she's attacked by ghosts. I mean, we all took health class. We all know it. I mean, that's, that's basic, like, that's pretty much my health class in a yeah. nutshell, except there's way more teenage girls sitting on the lap of the, of the teacher. Yeah. Like, way more. Like, a lot. Like, like you've described something and you've completely neglected to include the fact that teenage girls sit on the health teacher's lap constantly. All the time constantly and then he just like he won't go to the chalkboard he just stays sitting down it's weird um i he did he (laughs) did just stay sitting down yeah that like like brandon this this is this is not like a bit at all oh no no like everyone out there this is not a bit our 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 health teacher was definitely doing untoward stuff yeah in middle school. This was middle school, by yeah. the way. Also, he was a priest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got, he's got like, like, if you have a bingo card for this type of behavior, yeah. you're pretty much hitting all of them. Yeah. This is the, uh, there's a lot of the, I'm legally obligated to tell you this. Also, uh, abstinence only. Um, yep. No. <laughs> Uh, the police work continued. They isolated the whole Bowen family in one room under guard, but the stone throwing continued. The girl seemed quite unconcerned and was removed from the house on Thursday night. Uh, over 50 civilians in the police watched till morning. No stone throwing occurred while the girl was away. But when she was brought home on Friday afternoon, the attacks uh, recommenced in broad daylight. A constable... So wait. Yeah? But were any were any stones thrown at her when she moved? Uh, like to a different location, because like because she, she was if, just unobserved. <laughs> but if if she's the center of this activity, theoretically, it should follow her, right? Like, why would it yeah, be bound like, to the land? She's the light, and the the rocks are moths. Pretty much, like yeah. why why does she get ah uh, whatever whatever ah uh, whatever. Uh, uh. Uh, A constable sat on the bed in the room beside the girl, and the stones fell on the bed. Police are still working on the case, but their operations are hampered by having to search for an old woman who has strayed into the bush and has been missing for two days. Um, Okay, I'm just going to say, operations being hampered by that, that takes a precedence, I feel like. That that takes a precedence. Because I Um, feel like that that woman has a really high chance of being dead. We'll touch on that later. Uh, the following morning, the entire town... Are you fucking town... kidding me? No. It's gonna come up? It's gonna come up. <laughs> oh, my God. What? The... Why is this story insane? But I don't... It, it's Australia. Why... Like, why is this story... This is like... Like, like the, the, 
I read the basic synopsis of the story when we did the fir- after we did the first one. Yeah. And it seems boring as shit. Why is there so much weird stuff happening in this story? So the story itself is boring until you get to the details, and then there's just a lot of screaming why into the universe. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Uh, The following morning, the entire town began talking about the goings-on, and the fact that nobody was found by the group, and nobody was even shot, um, it, it had them talking about the possibility that it was not done by any human Multiple newspapers began reporting on the, quote, mystery house, and the first paper uh, being the Argus, and then all of the follow, uh, um, major newspapers followed. Um, the bounds were in papers across the country, and the more the story was reported, the more the details started to change and be, be more, uh, like the newspaper, they're all trying to, like, tweak and outdo each other and sell more papers. Um, but the question is, Brandon, was it just Ned Kelly's ghost? It was he's just got all of them. good because he's got that he's got that like armor on, but he doesn't have the legs covered. No, and he's gonna get shot in the leg, and he's gonna be like, "All right, I give up." <laughs> but they're aiming high, right? Aim high. So that 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 negates his one weakness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the locals just started to hang around the house in an effort to see the ghost, and the stone throwing continued even with the townsfolk and police and watch. Um, the rocks were getting larger and thrown from farther away. What? Although, if you can't see their origin, I'm not sure you can tell how far they're being thrown to begin with. Did they just, did they just get, like, a trebuchet at one point and they're just, like, fucking launching, tre- <laughs> like, things through trebuchets? Like, they've just got a trebuchet at this point. They're, 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 their house just happened to be located near, like, a medieval times reenactment place. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, no! Uh, Some ideas began to float about how to solve the problem. Uh, It was suggested that all the rocks be collected. Someone else suggested that all the rocks be thrown into a fire. Yeah, John. What? So this is their problem solving. One, get all the rocks. Two, burn 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 the rocks. Um, Others recommended uh, that all the children be locked up. Or that the returning soldiers be stationed around the house to fire into the darkness. Uh, uh, I mean, if you're going to do the soldiers be stationed around the house and fire into the darkness, probably lock up the children. Yeah, lock up the children. I, 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 I love the burn the rocks. Um, uh, also, the still fun fact... Um, uh, the U.S., like the U.S., Australia has also been uh, at war uh, t- t- more or less uh, continuously in its entire existence. So the soldiers yeah. that would have been returning f- from the war they mentioned would have been either World War One or supporting the White Army in the Russian Civil War. Um, 21 would be White Army in the Russian Civil War, most likely. Yeah. Uh, other ideas were that also... Uh, the, the, the white army is the U.S. side with the they do all the bad things. Anyway, um, I mean, the, the, there's Brandon. Nobody, nobody is the good side in war. Yeah, but the white army is the more bad side. <laughs> I mean, they're 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 yes. they're, they're the uh, the round up all of these people uh, description and mass murder them side. True, you're not wrong, but like. That's like every army, kind of. Yeah. Uh, other ideas were that Mitty was the culprit, or that the whole thing was a hoax. Um, I'm with the burn the rocks guy. I'm I'm honestly with the burn the rocks guy. That guy's talking sense. That guy's like he, he's 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 thinking or she, or yeah, she, or she, or she, or they. They. I you don't, don't need their, to use gender language. I don't language. know their pro- I don't know their pronouns. So, whoever this person was, burn the rocks. They've got the right thought. They they're right thinking about this whole problem. There's I'm all about creative problem solving, and there's nothing more creative uh, uh, than just burning the rocks. Uh, Burn all the rocks. No rocks are allowed to exist anymore. Yeah. Um, it was at this point that other things began to be attributed to the Goria ghost. Mrs. Duran, so the the elderly woman that disappeared from the aforementioned okay, yep. uh, article. 
Uh, so her disappearance was attributed to, to the ghost itself. So Mrs. Duran, an elderly woman, a.k.a. Precorpse, uh, vanished. Uh. Uh, this was uh, now due to the malevolent ghost. Uh, they also said it could have been human sacrifice or that she got too close to the secret of the ghost and had to be disposed of. I, I feel like Mrs. Duran is just, like, doing her thing, right? Yeah. And, like, all these people are like, oh, she must be, like, one of the greatest detectives in Australian history. She's the Perot of, of Australia. <laughs> um, however, my theory was that she she sadly just wandered into the woods, got lost, and passed because of, like, cognitive withering from an old age. Uh, since the last reported sighting of her... Um, she was walking over the top of a hill holding exactly two potatoes, one in each hand, and saying, um, and, and this is how it was written in the article, so I believe she was doing an ex- accent. I'm, I'm taking these spuds to Old Ireland. Um, now, unfortunately, my theory was, was wrong, or at least partially wrong, or I was correct. It's hard to tell from, from reading, but whatever the case, six months after her last sighting, um... A rabbit tracker found her body at the bottom of a steep incline with two potatoes next to her. She had fallen to her death. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a woman just dying. But the fact that she had the two potatoes. It's still, the potatoes. It's the potatoes. <laughs> it's the potatoes. The <laughs> potatoes are the bit that makes that funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Why? Two potatoes. Two, two, one two potato, potatoes. Po- two potatoes, no potatoes more. <laughs> I'm just surprised that the potatoes didn't turn into a plant. Those fuckers spud, like, instantly. They must have grown. Garlic doesn't go bad either. It just turns into younger garlic. Um, other events began to happen. I mean, you can say that about most plants. Yeah. They don't really go bad. They just turn into younger versions of themselves. Yeah, <laughs> now that you've worded it that way. Like, most fruits and vegetables are usually just, like, like, if they got the seeds, it's just, like, nah, they, they're just, they're just, like, gonna turn into a younger version of themselves. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> um, other events also began to happen. Uh, some as a direct result of the haunting. Uh, some were bo- boarding on farcical, and others were luckily um, not to have ended with death. One man was reported to have uh, rushed from his house on two successive nights to engage in mortal combat with the unseen spooks. One turned out to be a dog eating food in his pantry, and the other was a horse eating his flowers. <laughs> you gotta watch out for them horses eating your flowers. You gotta, like, like, I'm just, I love, like, this man waking up and just charging to the darkness to fight a ghost, and it's a horse. <laughs> I'd rather fight a, alright, I'd rather fight a ghost than a horse, though. Like, if I'm being completely honest. Same. Horses be big. They'll fuck you right up. I've been around lots of horses. They'll fuck you up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. If they don't crib themselves to death first. Because they're dumb. Just big, dumb dumbs. Or they just eat a flower that'll kill them. Because this horse apparently was eating flowers. So, like, you know. Oh, it's Australia. This is an Australian horse, not an American horse. The Austrian horses, they're venomous. Um, true. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because they eat the flowers. The flowers make them venomous. Exactly. That's that's how horse work. Uh, yeah. Constable Stennett, uh, half asleep on the night watch while at the Bowen house, failed to notice a calf sleeping next to him until it grunted and passed wind, at which point he jumped up startled, grabbed his gun, and fired wildly. Fortunately, what? <laughs> the calf, which was probably just as scared as the policeman, uh, he missed. <laughs> Imagine hearing a fart and then being like, fuck, and then just shooting. <laughs> it's the ghost. Get your guns. Wildly. God, I'd be dead in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Um, or a fart beat, if you will. Oh, I hate you. Uh, another incident stops just short of tragic results when a young lad, upon finding a loaded revolver that had been placed under the bed, uh, just in case the ghost comes, pick it up. Uh, picked it up and shot his older si- uh, his his six year old sister in the head. Um, she was rushed what? to the hospital and survived. A uh, baby shot a six year old in the head with a revolver. Why would they do that? Because why? because the gun was why? to keep the ghost away. But why? Australia. But why parenting, John? <laughs> parenting. I guess I don't have parental instincts. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Everyone I mean, knows I just... your first instinct when you become a father is to give that baby a firearm. <laughs> I mean, what part of the United States are we in? Or Australia? Yeah. Because that yeah. might be the case. You, you've, you've got it. If, if they can walk before they have good trigger discipline, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's just how it goes. You gotta really work that those fine motor skills real quick. Uh, Gross motor skills? Who cares? You gotta get them fine motor skills going. Oh yeah. Uh, By this point in time, on any given night, there were twenty to eighty people stationed around the Bowens' home. Um, Now they had armed persons all around the house, as well as people stationed farther out. To where the stone thrower may be. So now, uh, now we have um, concentric circles of people surrounding the house. And then they just start firing at each other. Oh, like one guy like makes a bush rustle and then everybody starts firing at their direction of the bush. Oh. And then you just then you just have a ghost fight. There's... But it's not ghosts, it's people. People with actual guns. It's it's dangerous. It is very dangerous. Um it made no difference. The stones were still thrown. Um, so hard, in fact, that the other house that was built for Bill Hodder, um, for those of you keeping up, there were that, there's so many related people living in a four-room house that a second house had to be made. Um, that house was destroyed, and they had to move back into the main four-room house. Again, that's 13 people, four rooms. Um, I hate it. <clears throat> it's so good. Um, a noted psychic, Ben Davey, visited from nearby Erla, uh, arriving in Goria on the 13th of April, um, so again, this is just a day after that news article was written, um, gathering an audience uh, at the train, Davy proclaimed that the ghost was an angel, um, announcing that the second coming of Christ was on its way. Uh, after what? Being, after being observed talking to a tree by the railway station and being suspected of using hypnotism and ventriloquism, um, the tree was replying what? to his questions, Davy scurried off to the Bowen household, just as the townsfolk were discussing lynching him. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in that, like, one paragraph. That's a really dense paragraph. It's, it's packed full of really just spicy information. Yeah, some juicy shit yeah. there. So, uh, 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 <laughs> a psychic ventriloquist talking to a tree saying that the ghost was Jesus then goes to the Bowen's house. Um, tracks. It all tracks. Davy is now in the Bowen home, along with Constable uh, Taylor and Minnie, and the other rooms are filled with the remaining family members. Outside are an estimated 80 armed townsfolk. Um, the knocking began at 9 p.m., and some people say the house visibly shook. Davy asks Minnie to uh, to talk to her, sis- her stepsister, and she replied, I can't talk to my sister. She's not here. She's dead. I imagine she says, like, in a really creepy way. Like she or, didn't. Like, I don't know. Like she's I, not I'm here. Imagining, she's dead. I'm imagining that that like Minnie is just like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's dead. Like you dumbass. She's like, you're an adult. You should know better. Yeah, um, pretty much. That's. I'm imagining that reality for yeah. Minnie, not the other See, one. Minnie in my head is that girl from the Resident Evil movie, the one who's like, you're all going to die down here. That chick. Like that. That's how or I picture the, Minnie. Or, or is she the girl from uh, the Aliens movie? They come out. They mostly come out at night. Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that's a, yeah we should be mm-hmm. casting directors. Um, mm-hmm. So Davy insisted she give it a try. Uh, and he said, speak, dear. Even your sister can't speak. She might knock again. And then a thumping was heard. Uh, Davy kept insisting uh, to Minnie that it was, her, it was May, her sister. And then eventually Minnie walked into the middle of the room and stood up straight, feet together, cocked her head, and had a conversation with Davy. Um, after after that, was uh, she went to her mother's lap, cried, and then Davy said, uh, "Well, the crowd might as well hear the message." Um, what? So 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 what happened is he's like peer pressuring Minnie to be like, "Talk to your sister. Talk to your sister. Talk to your sister." He's pressuring her to have this conversation with the ghost. She goes and cries on her mom's lap, and then he says to Minnie, it's time for the crowd to hear your sister's message. So he's what? telling her, tell everyone what your sister's saying. Um, and it, to which Minnie replies, uh, tell mother I'm perfectly happy where I am. 
uh, and that your prayers when I was sick brought me he uh, here uh, where I am, and it made me happy. Tell mother not to worry. I'll watch and guard over you all. Uh, and then all the knocking stopped, what? and everyone waited for about an hour, and then just kind of left. I don't. I don't really understand what just happened, Brandon. He he like pressured Minnie into saying that her dead sister was talking, and then Minnie said that her sister was causing the knocking and that she's in heaven and she's guarding over everybody. He, he just, like, pressured a child into ghost stuff. Mm, okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. That sounds about right. That sounds, that sounds about, like, a 1920s dude. Yeah. Uh, there were no strange noises or rocks being thrown all day uh, while they were outside working. Um, however, when they were turned home, uh, this is, like, the next, next morning, uh, they found mm -hmm. that every window in the cottage was broken. Um... Uh, the wood that was covering them to stop the stones from hitting them had been torn off and piled on the front porch, yet no one from the family heard or saw anyone that day. So, like, the next morning, they all go out to work. They come back to the house after a hard day's work and find everything all... Mm -hmm. It's all smashed up. Um, William okay. Bowen then went back to the police. Again, he, at least just going back to the police. Um, who then contacted Sydney, and Sydney then sent over Constable Hardy to finally get to the bottom of the case. So they're escalating it, right? It's no longer just the town cops. They're, they went to the headquarters, sent mm -hmm. the big dogs over. <coughs> okay. Before he arrived, okay. um, Ridge, uh, he, he tried one more trick. He sent the bounds away for the evening without telling anyone and placed Taylor, the sergeant, uh, alone at the house. He then placed 50 men at the neighboring property and told them to wait there until he called for them taylor uh, reported that stones began to hit the walls as soon as darkness fell he then heard someone walking to the house and knocking on the door taylor silently dropped to the ground uh determined not uh to open the door but instead peek out and saw what he later surmised was a man wearing a pair of hobnailed boots uh standing there mm -hmm. uh, he could only see the guy's boots whoever it was knocked again uh, but did not call out as you would have expected if he was like trying, like, hey, you home? He didn't do any of that shit. Um, so he's got, he's basically got like boot cleats on yeah. for all intents and purposes. Yeah. For those of you who are like wondering what a hobnail boot is, I'm sure you've heard the term, but it's basically, it, it's basically boot cleats. Yeah, it's like a thing you could put on your boot. Um, yeah. After a short period, the man with the boots walked off. He then called for everyone. However, they couldn't find the man. My problem with the strategy was he didn't call for everybody while man was there. He waited till man be not there, then call the people. Yeah, why wouldn't... Also, he like was looking out the door, right? Uh, he might have been... Not to... It's unclear. I think he was just peering out why, of, like, he didn't want to. He didn't want to open the door and said peeked out. Why didn't he just, like... Why didn't he just, like, oh, there's a dude there? I'm just going to throw this door right open. Yeah. Again, <clears throat> let's not forget, he is the police. He is the police. Like, he can just open the door and be like, gotcha. Like, he... Ha, he, gotcha. Ha. Like, he, he could have done nothing. Nothing was stopping him from doing that. In fact, some would say that was kind of his job. Uh, to be like, ha, ha, gotcha. Hey, man, the police aren't there to protect you. That's true. Uh, that is a fact. <laughs> it's very much so. Uh, two days later, the constable arrived. Uh, he visited the Bowens with 50 armed men, and the local police and the Bowen family were there. They keep bringing more people. Um, <clears throat> That's really weird. They, they, it, it's like there's not a lot to like, do. There's not. They're a lot not, to not do. trying. Yeah, I, there must not be because like they're not trying to de-escalate the situation in any way, shape, or form. They're just like, all right, uh, gas go room. Like they're, they're, the two things that they ha this town apparently has is rocks and potatoes, and that's it. That's just kind uh, of and, it. And clearly, and and Miss Doran, Mrs. Doran already took all the potatoes. Okay, she, she took all the potatoes, and thus far, statistically, potatoes are much more dangerous than rocks. I mean, the, the if we're saying the, by body the, the, count, the, purely by, by body by count, body count, <laughs> the potatoes by body are count in this story. Yeah, the potatoes have been associated with more actual factual deaths. Yes, yes, this is this is that kind of time period. They all hunkered down for the night, hiding around the house uh, and in the woods, chasing down just any odd sound. A reporter from the Sunday Times, who was also there, um, 
wrote in his own article uh, that he was just hiding in a dark corner, staring at Minnie the whole time. And he said she wasn't not pretty and nothing happened that night. I, what? I don't want to point this out. He wrote in the newspaper that Minnie wasn't not pretty. H- how old was Minnie again? Twelve. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Cool and good. This is cool and good, and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Yeah. Except everything. Yeah. Everything is wrong with that. Like, local news pervert <laughs> hides in a corner. Um, the- I mean, isn't that most <laughs> isn't that most journalists? <laughs> yeah. Like, at a certain... It, like, if you go far enough back, like, most journalists are local news perverts. Yeah. Uh, the- like, I mean, actually, <laughs> kind of... Journalists in general, and this is going to be a hot take from John, uh, are news perverts. They've got, like, a thing for the news. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're, slightly, ner- they're slightly news perverts. There's, <laughs> I'm wet for sources. <laughs> mm, give me them primary sources, boy. <sighs> uh, the next morning, the constables told, the sergeant, uh, told Sergeant Ridge that many was, quote, wasn't right in the head, and that she was what? responsible for everything th- everything that happened, including the stone throwing, the shooting, and the rapping. And I presume he didn't mean sh- that she was just spitting fire? She might have been spitting fire, though. She... Like, <laughs> like they might they might, n- might have left that out, because that would have made her too uh, sympathetic of a character, because then she's just spitting fire. It turns out that whole thing where she was supposedly talking as uh, her dead sister... She was just rapping that whole thing. That, oh my god, that would be, I would go to a live show that was like, into stage, and the whole thing is set up like a seance, and then like, a little girl like, stands up, and like, awkwardly herky-jerks to the microphone, pretending like she's uh, uh, possessed, and it's all spooky. And then she- And the, like, the eyes roll back, and the head cocks, and then she's like, my name's Minnie, and I'm here to say. <laughs> like, that'd be fucking fantastic. Well, no, no, but it would be good rapping. It wouldn't be. Oh, yeah, it not what be, I said. It would be good. Not what you said. It would be the opposite. It would be good. It would be like straight up like good rapping. Yeah, I'd pay money to see that. It'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, either that or it was a gang of six youths that she had recruited. Uh, he j- suggested that she be sent away to another town to see if everything would stop, and then he just kind of left. Um, Ridge sat down with Minnie and asked her outright if she had ever thrown any stones or rapped on the walls. Minnie confessed that she had thrown two stones onto the roof in daylight to scare her sister-in-law, May Hotter, and rapped on that's the walls like, uh, three times during the previous month. That's, like, kid shit. not... Yeah. Yeah, that's kid shit. Like, that's... She's like, okay, everyone says the house is haunted because of stone throwing. I'm gonna throw a stone to scare my sister. That's to be expected. Um... Many took that as proof enough. Uh, Ridge was set to retire soon, and he couldn't leave a high-profile case open, so he closed it and then recommended that William send Many to another town. Uh, William then shipped Minnie off to another town named Glenines to her grandmother's house. I mean, like, what? let's stop for a second. This is the best possible reality for Minnie. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, like, before that, she was living in a house with 14 people. Yeah, that's terrible. That's a nightmare. Uh, so she she arrived May 1st, so the last event happened on April 12th, so it was about a week and a half, two weeks later, she she got sent to her grandma's house. Uh, and the okay. events did stop. However, they stopped t- two weeks before she was sent off also. Like, that was the last event. So they had been stopped for a week and a half, two weeks, before she got shipped away. Um the newspapers were still writing all about it. The constable and Ridge were having a newspaper war, each trying to take full credit for the case and exaggerating the events that were happening. Uh, mm-hmm. Minnie was settled into the house with um, Catherine Shelton, uh, her son, and Minnie's uncle Alfred, and an unidentified baby. So we're we're only at like was that like four or five people? So we're we're about ten people less. So it's at least a nicer living situation. Yeah, I mean it's it's borderline a standard family. Standard family plus mystery baby. Um, yeah, mystery the mystery baby whatever. I mean mystery babies just show up. Like yes, they, they show do. up, they disappear. It's and nobody asks any questions. I'm it's picturing just, the babies from the how, forest. Maybe there's li- maybe like the video game, the forest. 
It would be very creepy. <laughs> now you know what I'm picturing. <laughs> oh, no. For me, that's mystery, baby. Oh, uh, that's going to be a problem in a couple years when the baby just suddenly starts, you know, bubbling. Bubbling, sprouting limbs. Who knows? Um, yeah, who knows? It was May 9th that the noises, like rocks hitting the walls, were, were beginning to be described. They happened while Minnie was at the dining room table with Alfred and Catherine. They called Constable Stewart, and by the time he arrived, people were gathered around the house because they also could hear the noise. Rocks passed by him as he walked around the house, and uh, one went through a bedroom window. He went inside and saw Minnie, the noise still happening outside, and he told her to stop doing whatever it was she was doing, and then left. So he shows up, and he's Mood. like, knock it off, and then leaves. I mean, I mean, if I'm this dude, I'm just like, I don't want to fucking deal with this bullshit. Stop. Like, like, bye. At that point in time, it's famous. Everyone knows about the rocks and the newspaper articles and next door police department said it's the girl. So he was like, knock it yeah. off. And then left, you know, <laughs> stop being a jackass uh, on, on paper that I mean, that that's that he, that was that was about as good as it could go. Uh, honestly, honestly, probably a better way to handle it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, do you mean then you mean uh, armed armed mob? You think he did better than armed mob? <laughs> yeah, I mean he did. He did. Yeah. Like I mean, it's it's a high bar, but like he 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 managed to clear it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, he managed to clear that bar. It's it's he he did it. He did the thing. Like for what it's worth, he made the thing happen. Yeah, uh, people remained outside the house for the bulk of the night, and the the night, the night, and noises night. continued to be heard. Uh, some sounded like thuds. Some sounded like rocks hitting the iron roof and walls. One witness, a neighbor named Martin, describes the noises as uh, like that of an axe being stuck heavily against the walls. The thuds were loud enough to be heard clearly by neighbors nearby, uh, who threatened to move if many remained. Martin also noted that the thuds were happening. Um, Minnie had not ventured outside of the house. So this is all happening while she's inside. Okay. Um, Daily Advertiser. Uh, Wagga not, Wagga. Wagga. Yeah, I, th I just include that because I like Wagga Wagga Wagga. Wagga 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 <coughs> Wagga Wagga. They, they published an article on the 11th of May, 1921, entitled, On the Move, the Goyra Ghost. Young girl followed it's about Glen Ines anymore. Tuesday. The Goria ghost has now appeared in Glen Ines, having apparently followed the girl Minnie Bound from her parents' house uh, to the home of her grandmother in Church Street of this town. Uh, while the family consisted of Minnie, her grandmother, and uncle were having tea, a stone was reported to have crashed against the dining room window, breaking way through uh, and hanging in a curtain outside. Uh, police were sent for, and Constable Stewart detailed to uh, investigate he stayed in the house some time and heard several bumpings and found it impossible to say whether they were caused by stones being thrown on the roof or the walls from outside or from some agency inside the building. Uh, he took possession of the stone inside uh, the window. It weighs about six ounces and is of white metal. I don't know That's what not white metal is. But if it's of white metal, then it's not a stone, right? No, decidedly like, not. It's a casting of like some sort. Yeah, like I would call that not a stone. Not not a stone. Not a stone. The mini bound story. Not a stone. Not a stone. Yeah, okay. not a stone. Uh, later on during the night, uh, the occupants of the house uh, heard noises of many stones being thrown against the walls and the roof. The girl Minnie Bowen came from Goria over a week ago, but last night was the first occasion on which any untoward noises were heard. Constable Stewart is of the opinion that the noise emanated from inside and that uh, his opinion is supported by Sergeant Ryan and other officers. Now Sergeant mm -hmm. Ryan came to the conclusion because, quote, Ryan storms back inside and confronted Mo Minnie. He backed her against the wall and began to scream at her and physically shake her, demanding oh. that if she did not confess and cease throwing the rocks uh, and banging at the walls, she would be stripped, shipped off to an asylum. Clifford would be placed into an orphanage and their families would never be seen again. End quote. What? Um, so I redacted my previous statement. I forgot. Uh, I included that. He didn't necessarily yeah. handle the situation that well. Um, well, no, this is this is Sergeant Ryan, the guy from the other one. Oh, right, right. Never mind. This, I take that back. Yeah, Constable Stewart still Stewart, just said, Stewart, ah, knock it he off. He did knock it off. Stewart did good. Ryan, not so much. Not Ryan. Ryan 
physically abused and mentally abused Minnie. Oh, yeah. For the sake of this. Um, and his report uh, also alluded to the, quote, six youth theory. Uh, Minnie's grandmother took her back to Goria the next morning. Uh, shortly after this, Cosgrove shot uh, the Gario mystery film starring Sherlock Doyle and a drunken ghost, uh, although no actual hauntings happened during the filming, uh, until he left, and then uh, it resumed for about a week, and then it just stopped altogether. News articles milked the story until 1954. Anytime someone reported a stone being thrown, it was the ghost. I mean, I, I'm kind of in the camp of that it was just a bunch of kids fucking about. It, that's, I get, like, like, the next biggest news story was an old lady had some potatoes. So it's not beyond, like, I, it, comprehension to, that, to be, that some bored kids would throw rocks. To be fair, though, um, to be fair, the, uh, the, the lady with the potatoes story is a little bit more than just lady with a potato. It is. She, a lady, lady died with a potato. There's potato lady got too close to the truth. She had to be taken care of. Well, but yeah, she was too close to the truth that carrying two potatoes in the bush makes you more powerful than anyone could ever imagine. Oh yeah, they were. <laughs> uh, she was killed by the other potato user that was in the bush. They, they were the infinity potatoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that those potatoes that she had w- that were found with her body were not the original potatoes. No, no. It's uh, a conspiracy. It is a conspiracy. The potatoes see all. That's why they're covered in eyes. <laughs> okay. So this has been Cryptopedia. Uh, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast.com. And our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. If you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast. We have a Patreon, and I want to thank our jackalopes, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, and Jonathan Shepard. We also has a fa- have a Facebook group um, where y- you can just talk about the fact that Brandon just made that terrible joke. <laughs> or you can do it on the Discord server, which there's a link in the show notes. If you can read and review the show or spread it, feel free. Monster requests or stories are also accepted. Uh, just not the Wendigo. There's a long history to that one. <laughs> you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. I'm on Instagram at Mew2057. My Twitter is JF Dunham. And my website is John Dunham Games. You can email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. Our website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> Let's have a shot of rum Then we can make you come